And welcome back to the final turn here in this scenario, apparently. Let's see how it goes. <clears throat> I'm very curious to see the end state. I've just skipped over that, so there's your little <laughs> spoiler already. This will be the last uh, command cycle resolution in this scenario. Okay, the infantry platoon is under artillery fire, is getting hit. Our artillery is striking against the objectives. And against Adolzheim, yeah, we have, uh, I've ordered this platoon to move up to the west. Um, as you can see, we are, we managed to cut in behind the enemy, of course, but we are stretched out very thinly and we know that enemy tanks are in the vicinity, so that might be dangerous over there. We see more mechanized infantry coming up here. And they will probably annihilate this platoon as well. Um, more of our artillery strikes against Adolzheim. In preparation of the movement, we have more artillery going down on Vikashvir. And the reinforcements are rushing forward hastily in road columns to push against the enemy and push into Kolma. I mean, that is what we want to achieve, right? At heavy losses here with the first infantry attack at Ingersheim. And now we hope to get in from the from the southwest into Kolmar and take the objective. Let's see how it goes. We see the anti-airs rushing forward. It's the first vehicle, but it's probably because it is wheeled. And they are holding there now. So that's all good. More artillery going down onto this section. The town with the name I don't know what its name is Yeah, they are moving now along the <clears throat> the national road. Mortar fire. There are still mortars around somewhere. I haven't spotted them by radar, but I'm not even sure. I should have checked if we have a unit that can detect radar. Or rather, has a a radar to detect enemy units. But I think we had some spotting of the artillery back here. If I remember correctly. Okay, that's more preliminary artillery bombardment <laughs> on uh, inhabited urban terrain. Hmm. That would be that would be a very nice feature, I think, uh, which we didn't tackle in the in the interview but that's also because you know you know in one and a half hours there's only so much you can talk about and it was a very sort of basic approach with very with many basic um questions so that also people who haven't played the game before could get an understanding of what it is about and how various mechanics work together so but that is a thing that i find highly interesting is um what about civilians? I mean, we had that in one scenario that sort of um, refugees um, floating out of the area sort of increases the command cycle and delays reinforcements for one side. Um, but obviously, we are attacking into a huge city here, or medium sized city, let's say. Colmar, and we are constantly bombarding the outskirts and the, the city and the towns all around. And uh, yes, most likely the civilians will have been warned in advance. They know that there is war, that there is the offensive is going. But as you can see on a daily basis in the news and television and, and whatnot, all across the internet, of course, not everybody, not all the civilians are leaving these areas, right? 
um, for various reasons, um, totally understandable reasons. And so I think civilians in, and there we have the end screen, civilians in these kind of war games are way too often neglected. They should be much more of a factor. Um, and if it's just mentioned sort of in, in the debriefing or whatnot, uh, or if it impacts, I don't know, headquarter decisions or, or whatnot, right? So that they avoid certain areas and, and that they do not bombard certain areas or, or whatnot. There, there could be many just little subtle um, implications of the existence of, of civilians in war games. And I know there have been um, a number of talks about this topic, which I can see is a difficult topic because um, players might not want to uh, have the want to be sort of pushed onto the fact that in war people die and that war is much more dirty and gruesome and cruel than in a board game or digital war game. I can understand that, but at the same time, it is an important aspect of war, of warfare, all about, all, all through history. So yeah, um, something I would wish to see more often in games is the, the various aspects concerning civilians in conflict situations. Anyways, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Renault commanding the 12th Regiment de Curassier. The enemy has suffered losses and withdrawals exceeding 70% and is reorganizing. You and your forces obtained a marginal loss. So apparently nobody wins then. Is that true? So the enemy has lost, but we haven't reached the objectives, which would have granted us 6,000 points and of course there are more more here so <laughs> this is an, an interesting dualism of mechanics isn't it so we have broken the enemy and thereby we are winning yet it is a marginal loss because we have not managed to take the objectives in time so to say before breaking the enemy <laughs> which is a little bit weird but uh I guess it sort of makes sense, although of course these type of, of victory conditions cannot take into account the actual situation on the board. So I would say, given that we, we can now see all the units, right? And I will zoom out and take a look. But what we can see is basically Colma is completely empty. There is an light artillery section here there is an anti-air section here there's another one there scouts or whatever and we are pushing in with two with two more battalions of mechanized infantry battalion of tanks is coming down and all that so <laughs> we will obviously take these objectives no matter what even if they if the warsaw pact now concentrates all the artillery on that they won't be able to hinder us from taking those objectives and yes so take that into account if you when you see or judge the outcome of this uh, scenario um it's even rated one level higher than it would have been that is very interesting so let me let me take a a, a screenshot of that Need we remind you that you must outperform expectations if you expect to keep your command. <laughs> the 12th Regiment de Curassier finished the battle with 78% by victory point value. So we lost 22% um, by value of our own forces and we destroyed 13 recce, 16 battle tanks, 69 armored personal carriers, 17 infantry sections, um, 580s, 14 HQs, and 14 air defense units, and so on and so on. The men have earned a total of five awards for heroism and combat leadership. We have 44 units fallen out. 
Okay, and we we are going to oh there's much more. Okay. I thought we would have already been in a position to see everything, but now we can. So let's see. Um I guess still we would have been able to take that, right? Here's a guard headquarter. <clears throat> God moderates rifle, but they have taken heavy casualties already, so they are not really uh, an obstacle anymore. Here we have two platoons of infantry, mechanized light infantry. These are anti-air, so they don't really count against that. What do we have here? Recon. Um, not really an obstacle anymore. We have this one here. Yeah, okay. This that had has been uh, <laughs> quite the menace for our tanks. And now, uh, yeah, this they are now actually been <laughs> ordered to move back to the move back to the west. Interesting. More anti-air. Very anti-air heavy. I feel the Warsaw Pact forces were in this situation. That is very interesting. No forces whatsoever in Horburg, Wier, and Adolfsheim. Um, concentration here. And, well, of course, in Colmar. But that is very interesting. Okay. Yeah, well, I guess the infantry should have been able to take care of that, hopefully. Will of course be a difficult call. Interestingly, though, we have actually managed to claim this objective. Um, let's take a look at that. Ah, now it shows. Now it shows decisive victory for us. And yet, I only got three stars. Hmm. That is very interesting. I did just, sorry for that, <laughs> to do that during the recording, I did just um, tell the, that to Peter. Uh, because we were just chatting about the game and a potential follow-up <coughs> situation. So, USSR holds these, which is worth nothing to them. And these two, which are worth a total of 1,000 points. And we have all the others. So also these in the in the city. And we can now, let's see, which one might that be? 3,000 points. That is, that is probably this one here, right in Colmar. Yes. And we can now see, okay, the game is rating control for us because the enemy does not have a unit in that very hex. And we have a majority of forces and combat power in the vicinity of that hex let's see the other hexes yeah this one here you can see the enemy has more units in the vicinity nobody controls the hex itself uh, then we have this one where two of our units are counted as in the vicinity these two here okay um this one over there, yeah, we have lots of tanks there, but only slightly more than the enemy. And, well, the other ones um, we have just taken. There is parity on this one, I think. I'm not sure. Okay, there's parity on this one, but I'm not sure why we gain control then. Because we did so even though the enemy has a unit on the very hex. So that is very interesting. Maybe it's it comes down then to the sort of unit 
strength by victory point value per unit. And that will certainly be more for the tanks than the infantry. Although <clears throat> uh, the tanks will have a bit of an issue getting into that town, at least against... Uh, not so sure. This unit here might have close range anti-tank weapons. These guys not, but yeah. Anyways, the butcher's bill, as you can see here, yeah, oh, heavy, heavy losses here for the <laughs> for the Warsaw Pact. Indeed, we lost, still lost quite a number of tanks though. Um, let's look into that. Yes, we lost all of our helicopters, all two, which were committed by my fault. Um, we have lost tanks. Six destroyed, 17 fallen out. Okay, that's not too bad, I guess. That's not too bad. Uh, now we could check by platform and all that. So USSR lost 16 tanks. They didn't have that much, that many tanks, 26. So 14 fallen out, two lost. That's not too bad, although we will probably control the area and they won't get those back and won't be able to recover them. But anyways, still 40 infantry fallen out, 11 destroyed, 50 BMPs destroyed, uh, 19 destroyed, 50 fallen out. Very interesting, okay. Well, I'm not still not quite sure why it, this differs um, why the game gives me three stars here and then gives me a decisive victory in this overview. This might be a bug, I don't know. Maybe that's, that is intended, I, I have no clue. Can I actually send that to Peter as well? Let me take a screenshot here. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the game. I, I certainly did. That was quite a, an interesting scenario. Um, it was interesting that we had actually uh, engineers to build bridges, although we didn't really use them. We wanted to use them to cross here. Um, and um, that we actually managed, to, managed to, to push that far behind the enemy position. Uh, that was very interesting as well, although... A concentrated counter push would have annihilated this company. Um, other than that, what else can I say? Uh, we will we will certainly play another game of this. I I believe, uh, although for now Peter is taking a little break of uh, gaming and is concentrating on other stuff. So there's that. Definitely go and check out our interview we did with on target simulation developers. Um, uh, especially if you're new to the game, that might be interesting because we are sort of giving, uh, or especially Peter is giving uh, an introduction and the, the uh, devs add to that from their perspective. And there's also an interesting, um, they provide interesting insight into what's coming in the next patches, what is on their roadmap and to-do list for coming campaigns. Um, DLCs and all that. So um, I will see you on the next game and I wish you a, a very good day. See you soon. Bye bye.